So uh, uh, just to uh, house rules, uh, during the master class, we, uh, uh, Mrs. Brailing will definitely open up a Q and A. I do want her to sort of lay out the foundation before we start asking questions though. Th this will enable you to have a fuller understanding and perhaps a broader understanding. I understand there are colleagues here from India. I understand there are also colleagues here from Mexico and uh, different parts of, of, of Africa. Most of the masterclass, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm making an assumption here, it will probably be more South African mm, focus. Uh, the examples that we might get might be more South African focus because I'm based in South Africa. And 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 I don't want you to, to be dismayed because obviously that's why you have Miss Dagmar. Dagmar will, will definitely share her um, contact details so that uh, she can help you with your specificity in your own business. This is what she does for a living. And this is how she helps entrepreneurs build successful, fundable businesses. So don't be shy to ask questions. And if your question is not addressed, do not stress. By uh, uh, Ms. Dagmar, we'll definitely be sharing their recording. Not only that, be sharing contact details and will or during this masterclass, she will share exactly how you can get hold of her um, uh, or when you need her services. Obviously, it's just uh, you can't speak to her for free. Unlike you, I know, oh my God, my video is off. I know people can speak to me for free. Uh, you can't speak to Ms. Dagmar for free. <laughs> this is a service to her and um and she does she gives favorable um rates for people who are uh, who had attended uh, the master class so she will definitely be sharing all of those perks anyway we, we will start in a couple of minutes but thank you everyone for joining on time in particular the guys from twitter because i did make it Known that uh, on Twitter, I, I only have an hour live. Um, I don't have the paid account. So I, I know I'm going to fall off uh, maybe before we finish, but the recording will be available, uh, as I've already mentioned. Thank you, everyone, for attending on time. We will start shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining on time. Let me introduce myself and Ms. Dagmar, um, who is going to be our masterclass facilitator today. My name is Kolela Souma. I am the program manager for Africa at the Wadwani Foundation. Our mission as a, found as a Wadwani Foundation is to empower entrepreneurs so that they can create 
employment in their communities. The, hence, our mission is to eradicate poverty. At least each and every family should have a basic income so that they could feed their own families. That's our mission. Is to, it, 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 our mission is that simple? Our courses are all for free. Anyone, you there's no qualification needed as long as you can speak English uh, or, or Hindi. Uh, those who can speak Hindi and uh, some of the courses are available in France, in in French. So you can partake in that. In the next coming um, weeks, you may receive an email specifically from me for those who had signed up for this regarding Ignite X. Ignite X is an online platform that we, we have deployed in number of countries and we are also deploying it here in Africa. Now we are targeting people who are serious enough to partake in that course where you are able to attend at least one hour per week, uh, which is a live session facilitated either by Charles, uh, hopefully Charles is here, uh, or myself. Uh, at the back of that, we are looking for people who would like to facilitate the entrepreneurship course to their own communities. And we will train you on how to do that at no cost. And we will provide you with the platform uh, that you can uh, use at no cost at all. We will partner with you in the basis that you, you have to be interested in empowering your communities and, and particularly young people. Uh, we wanna walk away from the job seeking uh, and start building businesses uh, that could, can enrich our lives. Without any further ado, let me welcome Ms. Dr. Dagmar Breling, who is an exceptional financier, somebody who has worked as a strategist and who has developed a number of businesses throughout the years. Today, she is the founding strategist at Founding Connection, and she works with a number of people across Africa, and hopefully some of, of, of the colleagues that she works with uh, are on this call. If not, you'll definitely be interacting with them electronically as well. Office Ms. Dagmar will share their contact details at the end. Dagmar, welcome once again. I'm so humbled that I keep abusing your time in the evening. Hopefully you're back in Africa. If, you, if you're in Germany, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, uh, I'm back in South Africa. Thanks very much. Thanks very much uh, to the Wadwani Foundation for inviting me, Solela and Charles, for organizing this here. Um, good evening, everybody else. Um, I'm sure we will have an interesting evening tonight. Um, and I think it's exactly like uh, Solela just shared. Um, we are all entrepreneurs, okay? So we are not, we are doer and we want to make things happen and this admin and regulations and these rules and um, is definitely, it feels more like it's hindering us than really helping us. But we are living in this world. We need to obey. We need to uh, tick all the boxes. And it's... Um, if you run your business, it's important, <clears throat> but specifically important it is when you want to, to raise capital. And um, thanks very much for highlighting that, that we also have some uh, international guests here. So most of these requirements are similar in all, all countries. Okay, so like workman's compensation ship and... Uh, or the um, unemployment fund, you will find these um, requirements uh, across the borders, I assume. Um, but of course, the organizations who handle that will be different in, in each and every country. Okay. Let me just start with sharing my screen. And then I need to find the presentation. Um, we are all in, in the way. Okay, so I'll present full screen. And yeah, now I just need to move this here a little bit around so, so that we can all see. 
this goes out. Okay, so what do we do today? Legal. Uh, and Jack, my sorry, just 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 two seconds. Apparently, they can't see the screen on 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 Twitter. Just give me a moment. I I, I know how to fix that. Okay. So um, we we talk. We are today. on. We are on. You are, okay, lovely. I will just have spoken and hope that you fixed it in between. Okay, so <laughs> we talk about legal and regulatory considerations. In this case, specifically, the heading is specifically in fundraising. So, so Leila is always throwing some um, topics at me and I just uh, make it work. Um, short and crisp about uh, myself, I'm the CEO and the funding strategist here at Funding Connection. I have decades of experience. I raised here, um, while I've been doing this here in South Africa, over 70 billion rand. And just a fun fact, I'm a second dan in karate and I will do next year my third dan, hopefully. <laughs> We will train with the Japanese master in September. They're coming out here to South Africa. So I'm definitely excited. That will be a lovely weekend. So introduction. Let's just give a little bit of a frame what we are talking here about uh, today. I'm not too sure. Do you see these ones here? Let me just throw this one over here. Um, I want to give you an overview about the key legal and regulatory considerations the importance of understanding them and also to navigate uh, the challenges for your businesses. Like I said, um, it is important to follow these rules in the first place to run a successful business. It's specifically important when you want to raise capital and um, it does not matter if you want to raise capital from banks from government institutions, or if you're looking for private investors, they all want, want to make sure uh, that uh, you are able to uh, grow your business and that not one of these uh, regulations uh, will just uh, shut you down. Okay, so we starting, it is a little bit dry today, I know, I'm really, really sorry. If I come up with some uh, nice stories in between, I definitely will throw them in, but uh, I'm not too sure. Sh- I remember when I uh, uh, I studied economics um, and I've got a master's um, in it, and I thought, oh, let me um, have a look at uh, the some... Uh, law lessons they were um, offered there. I think I survived too. And I thought, you haven't even organized your books. I'm not sure if anybody of you had some um, some introduction to law. They say, this is the problem. And then they go through all the books they have and say, okay, this is relevant here, this is relevant there, this is relevant there. And I thought, can't you organize this? So I gave up. But you see, I'm still uh, facing with these challenges here. So um, in South Africa, uh, we have the CIPC um, and uh, that's the organization where you register your uh, your company. You also need to um, ma- maintain the company records. There are some reporting requirements. The latest one is that you need to disclose uh, your shareholders. And um, but I also know this is let me tell you, most of these uh, rules and regulations for for companies and uh, for money are international in any case. Yeah. So so that's why it does not matter if I say now here in South Africa, it's CIPC, it will be called in your country differently. But you still have the same regulations, you know. So and then there are, of course, the financial reporting. Um, you need to prepare and submit financial statements. And that is uh, um, the law is laid down by the international financial reporting standards. Um, Okay. Let me just see if I can't hide this here. Yeah, that fits me, suits me better. So our beloved text, I know we all love this. Um, It uh, takes lots of our administration to make sure that you um, do your accounting correct, 
that you file all the taxes uh, uh, correctly. Um, in South Africa, we have a system where you do uh, uh, can apply for a tax clearance certificate. So SARS, that's the uh, institution who collects the taxes here, um, gives you a tax clearance certificate. And as soon as you haven't submitted any of the documentation, it says uh, not tax compliant. I know in Germany, it, it works a little bit different. I always thought about it, how they do that there. Um, I think they just close your bank account. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> the business owner and the, the company will quickly sort things out so that the business is again um, able to uh, trade. We have a, a value added tax, the VAT, that is in most countries, you also need to pay this. You have the, in South Africa, it's called pay as you earn. Uh, that is the employee's taxes. You need to submit provisional tax returns. These are the taxes for your businesses and the company. And of course, we also need, don't uh, forget about the customs and excise. Um, you need to be compliant, um, pay the duties, you know, so if you're importing something, pay the VAT then on top of it. So um, these are the rules and regulations regarding taxations, nothing what is fun, um, but you definitely make sure you have everything uh, in place doesn't matter in which country you are. Specifically, if you want to have some funding from government, if you don't pay the taxes to government, your chances are quite zero that you're getting anything out of them. So that's why you need to make sure that everything is up to date. And of course, also financier, you know, so if they see that uh, you are not up to date with these requirements, they are worried that you need to close the doors from one day to the other and uh, not able, either way, if it is a, um, a loan, not able to repay a loan, or if you have a private investor, they also want to make sure that you follow your, all these rules uh, because as soon as um, your doors are closed, they're also losing lots of money, yeah? Do not underestimate this. Is this fun? No, I understand. I'm. We are all in the same boat, uh, boat here, but that is what is required. We are now we are talking a little bit about um, employment um, and labor law. So this is what you need to understand if you are or are re uh, requiring funding for an expansion. You need to make sure that you adhere to all these. Uh, um, rules and regulations. If you are a startup and you're seeing all these things, you are thinking, oh, I don't even want to start. This looks like it is a never ending story. Um, let me take a little bit away the uh, this, this frustration. So you start and there are lots of things when you are starting, you don't need to worry about it. It goes step by step, you know, so you don't need to worry about employment and labor acts if you don't have any employees. Yeah, the taxes first earn some money, make sure you have the sales done. Um, we always recommend having um, a bookkeeper minimum. I would even outsource this like, like um, we are even doing it and then have an extra tax consultant who's then able to assist you. But do me one favor and do yourself the favor. They are your consultant, yeah? They do not take away the responsibility for these things. You need to sit down with them. You need to make sure that you are understanding what they are doing, yeah? So part of my studies were luckily a little bit of accounting. So I have a understanding how this all works. I don't have an, uh, know all the rules and regulations. I didn't know them here in South Africa, but I was always able to ask and say, okay, so now I have employees. How do I do that? Where must I register them? And 
this is how you grow. So don't get frustrated if you if you see all these slides and I think I have 19 or something like this, you think I'm out of here, I don't even start a business. I hear you and I understand. Don't worry too much, step by step. As you grow, the more rules and regulations will come, um, will become relevant to you, yeah? So basic conditions is, of course, that you um, pay the income taxes for your employees, that you're paying the unemployment uh, uh, fund, that you pay the workman's compensation fund. Workman's compensation is if something happens during working hours and somebody has an accident, this is covered under specific circumstances by this specific insurance. Yeah, we are an um, office. Um, yeah, it's, it's not that dangerous. But if you think about a big factory, um, that is definitely important. And you want to make sure that all your staff members are properly insured. Um, Labor Relations Act, all the compliance with labor relations uh, this uh, dispute resolution pro procedures here in South Africa, there are different ones if you want to um, dismiss. I'm just looking for this. So I'm, my, my head says, oh, well, fire somebody. Okay, so the official word is if you want to dismiss somebody, there is a procedure how you need to do this. It's similar uh, like what I'm used uh, from Germany. But there are some specific steps you need to do here in South Africa. I can't remember that we had them in Germany. Yeah. So it doesn't matter in which country you are. Have a look. Make sure that your contracts are properly done, that people even have contracts so that uh, every you want everything to be above board. Um, here in South Africa, we have an Employment Equity Act um, and uh, it has something to do regarding the different, I think regarding the different races here in South Africa, but there's also some, some similar things with male and female, uh, what I remember from Germany. Occupational Health and Safety Act, even we as a small little office at that uh, when we started with this, I think we had 13 people. Uh, I saw we needed this. I implemented that immediately. <coughs> and uh, also it is a big file needs to be updated. I think every year we had the Department of Health and um, at our offices checking that we have everything up to date, you know, and you want, you don't want to get panic attacks and sleepless nights when they say we want to visit you and see that everything is in place. I said, it's not a problem. When do you want to come and have an appointment with us? We have everything in place. He went around, he had some in, uh, some interviews with my team members. Uh, there were small little bits and pieces where we said, yes, okay, so we needed to, to update our first aid kit or something like this, not a problem. He came back, he checked everything, all good, yeah? And we have in South Africa, I also not too sure if this is everywhere in the world, a skills development levy, so the employee and employer have to pay something into skills development levy and we are able to draw money out of it but it's also used for general um how do you say that upskilling people okay that is all about employment and labor basic I can't go too, too detailed into it, you know, so I think all your heads are already spinning here. I just want you to hear these things and say, ah, oh, okay, so if I have stuff, this is what I need to do. Um, and then, oh, I heard about Occupational Health and Safety Act. When do I need this? And then you just can take all this information and then step by step implement it. Don't think you need to have everything implemented at once. Okay, environmental compliance. 
you know so and this is now something where uh, this is not relevant also for for everybody you know for an office there is um, nothing really to consider um, if you want, let's say you want to start a chicken farm, I think as soon as you have here in South Africa over 2000 uh, chicken on a property, you need to have an environmental impact assessment done, just having a look what happens with the environment, what happens with the manure, you know, so and to make sure that all the risk what comes with this is managed properly yeah think about somebody wants to uh, to manufacture batteries and uh, there are also lots of poisoning liquids involved and maybe there are poisoning oh no no i don't know the word um if you can smile something you know what i mean okay so all this needs to be taken into consideration. So this is here in South Africa, man, um, handled by the National Environmental Management Act. I'm quite sure all countries have that in any case. Yeah. Water Act, um, specifically important when for everybody in agriculture, you need to have rights to use the water. It does not help that you have a borehole. It does not help that you um, that there is a river going through your property. It does not give you the permission to use this water. You need to have water rights, and it's here in South Africa on the title deed mentioned. Waste management, I mentioned that already, you know, so with the, with the chicken manure, what happens with this? If you think about any land fell, so how do they do this? How do they manage that there is no contamination? Absolutely important. And what you see here too is, uh, this is already one part that it is so important that you are an expert in your field when you want to start a business. Because if you are an expert and uh, you come out of the manufacturing from uh, and handling some hazardous um, goods then you know already this is I know my em old employer had all these in, in, in place so I'm sure I also need to have these things in place yeah it's not relevant for everybody but just have a look for if this if you need to follow these rules. Consumer protection. I, I think so. I'm quite sure that is also implemented in, in every country here. So there are different consumer protection acts and just to make sure because transaction between a business to business is legally seen differently. And uh, most of it was always clearly regulated and uh, what was missing before was a protection of consumers so it's between business and a consumer you know business to business transaction the other business they are usually seeing eye to eye you know as a consumer if you want to go against one of these big corporates you have no chance so and that's why they implement in these consumer protection acts just to make sure that uh, the consumer has also some rights and is protected and then there is the national credit act just to make sure that um, all the compliance with credit regulations and of course also protection of consumers in credit transactions are there then we have uh, here in South Africa, a couple of years only, the, the Poppy Act, that's a protection of personal information. It's an act, I'm not too sure since when uh, it uh, was de um, implemented and absolutely important if you handle personal information and we of course as funding connection do that all the time we need to make sure that this information is protected that nobody has access to it 
And all my team members, of course, also signed confidentiality agreements so that uh, all the information clients are sharing with us is definitely um, treated confidential. And you can see here also data collection, processing and storage is also a big part of it so that um, nobody can have access to this information. I'm not going into the details here. I just wanted definitely to highlight this. This is also industry specific regulations. Uh, we spoken already a little bit about the one or the other uh, industry, but mining has its own banking, insurance, agriculture. So make sure that you are compliant with all sector specific regulations and um, yeah i just mentioned a, uh, a few of them the mining charter banks act and the insurance act are a few of them what i also wanted to just uh, mention and highlight is definitely south africa has a central supplier database that means You can register there and um, government and every business can look for suppliers in this database and can also check at the same time that the company is compliant in all aspects because they keep keep in record about this. So, and this can be relevant for some industries. That's why I put it here under the industry specific regulations. So then let's come to the competition law. Um, the regulators, the government wants to protect businesses and consumers. And they want usually to make sure that there is nobody having, um, how do you pronounce this? <laughs> uh, monopole. So that there's only one big uh, company out there offering the services and nobody else, yeah? So they want to make sure that there is competition in the market to, um, because what does competition mean? That uh, they can't manipulate the prices and uh, the prices are, you see that I'm tired, I'm sorry people. <laughs> Um, so, and preventing anti-competitive practices, you know, either way, just saying we only uh, um, um, supplying one specific um, company, but also having a little bit of look at prices, because if there's competition, the prices is uh, relatively low. And if there is some, but if there's only one uh, supplier, they usually are able to, to increase the prices dramatically. Yeah. So what I know is here um, that uh, Fastway was sold to to another. I'm sure you all know Fastway. Uh, it is a door to door delivery service, and they do the last bits and pieces. And they were bought by another company, and uh, they needed to go uh, through government. In, um, institutions and just making sure that they are allowed to do that just to protect um, the, the public. In South Africa, we also have the broad-based Black economic empowerment. Let me just shout at my dog for a second. Give me a second. Okay, so uh, the B, 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 E, E, so is um, 
is a code and uh, requires here in South Africa uh, some specific reporting, some specific um, certificates. And um, I haven't heard that any other country has something like this, but this is here specifically for South Africa. And every everybody under 10 million rand has a level four in any case. And if you have a sales of more than 10 million rand per year, you definitely need to have a consultant and then being able to uh, determine your level. Intellectually property protections, YPA. Okay, so I'm a part of the triple I, that is the Institute for Innovators and Inventors. And um, that's why I have a little bit of insight about this um, IP protection and um, have a look if it is important for you. So, so what I learned, I thought, oh, you can just protect everything. Then I had a little bit uh, of a deep dive into it and um, everybody can just change things a little bit and then it um, you can copy it. So I definitely, if you think you need to protect your IP, talk to a um, lawyer who is specialized in this, yeah? So it has, it's the intellectually, uh, intellectual property, the copyrights, the patents, uh, new inventions, trademarks. So funding connection, the name is at the moment trademarked. And uh, there are also specific rules when you can say it's trademarked and we are still, I think two years or three years in the making trying to, to get the copyright to it. So you see that you, if you have a logo and then there is a TM small in there that is trademarked. And if there is a C, then there is a copyright and that is uh, properly registered in any case. Um, in some cases, um, your IP can be interesting for a potential investor. And that means they usually also want, of course, that this IP is in your business, in your company, where they want to invest and not outside of the company, yeah? So you need to, if you have um, intellectual property, if you maybe have already patented it or protected it, then um, you can see where you want to have this IP under the company you want to raise some funding for or under an outside company. You can play a little bit around with it. This is something what can be interesting for investors because they are maybe interested in your IP. Yeah. Um, yes, so the types of the IP protections, I'm not a lawyer, I'm straightforward with you, I'm not allowed to give you any legal advice, but if you need something like this, sit down uh, with a lawyer who is ex expert in this and have a chat to them too, does it make sense, yeah? I have so many times I saw, oh, yes, somebody patented it for me. And I was thinking, what did they patent? You know, so because I couldn't see anything and I tried to figure that out. And um, it cost lots of money depending on um, where you want to have your patent, only here in South Africa or worldwide. You know, there are a couple of, I think you can um have that you you want to patent it and then there is one year protection and then you need to pay again for the patent and then the patent is only there for a couple of years um we all know that from from the pharmaceutical industry so they have a patent for a couple of years and then there are how is it called 
generic cars in German, uh, generic um, medication available, you know, with the same um, things in there, but under a different name, you know, so, and usually cheaper. So, and then make sure it is properly registered. You need to think about, talk to your lawyer about these things, yeah? This is really, really individual where you need to have a look at what you need to do there. Um, and before you, maybe one thing is, let me just share that. Mm. If you have something where you think it should be protected, yeah, and you want to share and you, but you still need um, external investor or a financier, be careful with what information you want to share with them, have a non-disclosure agreement, be really protective. On the other side, you can't be too protective, okay? If you can't explain, um, because this is the, the crooks, you know, your IP is maybe the, the one thing the potential investor is interested in. So you just need to make sure that you can communicate what your IP is without giving too much away, yeah? Non-disclosure uh, agreements are definitely uh, one way to do that. Um, one thing is maybe also important. I'm not too sure if it, this is worldwide, but I know that somebody um, developed something and uh, wanted then to do um, a patent on it, but it was then presented in a competition. And then um, they were not able to protect this IP, yeah? So that's also where you need to be careful what you want to do, what is important here for you, what is necessary for you, yeah? Import, export regulations. I'm just trying here really to be really diligent and cover everything so here in South Africa, you have an import and export license. You just can't uh, import and export things. You need a license for this. And it's not really difficult. You can apply with, uh, with SARS. It is an easy process here in South Africa. If you want to import things, just make sure that don't forget the duties on it. Okay, so lots of people say, oh, if I buy the, the machine here, it cost me, I don't know, 500 uh, 2 million rand and if I want to buy it in China it's only 500,000 rand and then people forget that they need to pay for the transport plus pay for the duties you know and then um, mm, there is then uh, not so much of a difference anymore so don't forget these things I just would like wanted to to, to mention this so now we're coming to the Financial Intelligence Center Act FICA Okay, it is an international law. It uh, doesn't matter where you are. You will face it. It is an anti-money anti laundry and counter-terrorism financing. So, and they want to prevent this. And uh, that's why we are all sitting here and really shaking our heads and say, really, you need now our shoe size, you know. So um, they are asking you all the questions, wanting all the documents from you. But this is why, yeah. They want to prevent money laundry and they want to make sure that uh, no terrorism is, is financed or money is used for terrorism. That's why we have this FICA here. And this compliance should prevent money laundry and uh, financing of terrorism. You, you know that, you know, certified copy of ID do we need here in South Africa? We need to have a proof of residence. We need to have the proof of bank account. In South Africa, everybody, everything needs to be stamped and, uh, and certify, certified. It's different in each and every country. So you just need to see what FIC, how the FICA rules and regulations 
are implemented in your country, but they are international, so there is no big difference. So now we come to security laws in South Africa. This is regulated by the Financial Markets Act. It's short FMA, also international. Okay, there's nothing what, uh, what we can do, nothing special here in South Africa. So what does this mean? It, it means that the, every investor, every financier will be also protected by law. So that, that means, and that's why there are different things regulated. Okay, so, so the securities refer here to, to shares and debt. And I'm only talking about uh, the the private companies. We are not talking about public uh, companies. That's that's a totally different ball game. I'm talking here realistic about SMMEs, what they need to do. Okay, so you have different uh, types of shares, definitely uh, here in South Africa, and I'm sure also all over the world, and the the different types give the owner uh, different rights yeah in some uh, uh, if you have specific shares you are able to vote and other um, maybe you also have shares with no voting rights and uh, these rights are set out in in the company's memorandum um, of interest yeah so you need just to see the MO moi states clearly what uh, shares every shareholder has and what are the rights. Um, one thing what should also be and must be clarified in this MOI is what happened if one shareholder wants to sell. Um, does this mean the other shareholder has the first right to, to buy it? And um, the MOI could also make sure that the director must approve the uh, transfer of shares. Keep in mind the director and the shareholder can be different people. Yeah. So in relationship to, to debt and debt is loans. Um, if, uh, if the company signs lease agreements, every goods on credits from suppliers or bank drafts, all these, uh, these are debts, and that is also, let me just, sorry, give me one second. Um, and this also can be um, protected then by, by this, um, this act. God. <clears throat> and Sorry. Okay. You know what we do here? I'm I'm really sorry. I'm having a terrible flu. Um, I will definitely let me have a look what I wanted to say there. I can't remember at the moment. These are all debts. Okay. So and all these debts are, of course, uh, protected by the security laws. And uh, the company also has surety and security and their assets are then used to... Uh, protect these uh, debts. Okay, let's come to the investor disclosure. Okay, so you, if you want to apply for a loan or if you are looking for an investor, you have obligations to disclose everything, yeah? It is absolutely important that you are transparent and uh, honest. And um, number one is if you are dealing with any financiers, they are able to, um, to have a look at your credit record in any case, and they will easily be able to check if the information you gave them and the information in the system is the same and your chances to raise capital if you tried to uh, not disclose some things so <laughs> definitely decreasing yeah 
So make sure that you're talking clearly also about the financial health of the company. Um, you can talk about hiccups and challenges. Don't dive too deep into it. You know, say, okay, we overcome came this and we managed this. That is in order. But you also, of course, need to disclose any risk associated with the investment, you know, or any other factors that could impact the value or performance of the company. And with this, of course, also of the performance of your investor. So if you're wanting to, uh, to attract an investor, this is so when people are asking me, I'm looking for a private investor or I want to, to have a partnership and I want to look for a partner, my advice is always think about it like a marriage. Okay, so this is in most cases, it's a long term uh, plan. You need to align with uh, your vision and the vision of your partner. And you need to make sure that you are both on the same track. Yeah. They, I'm sitting too many times in meetings where I then have somebody who says, Dagmar, I need to get rid of my partner. What must I do? How can we do that? And doing this is really challenging. Yeah. And it, in most cases, it costs you lots of money. If you would have had the little bit more planned, it would be uh, definitely save you lots of headaches and sleepless nights. I'm always worried about my sleepless nights, um, you know, so money solves lots of problems. Okay, you can throw lots of money at different challenges and it can be solved, but uh, the headache and the sleepless nights and uh, that's definitely not fun. So make sure if you have an investor that you have um, agreements in place, the partnership, uh, partnership agreements in place, Use lawyers. I know it's expensive at that time, but it will protect both parties in the long run. Be clear about what is expected from you, what is expected from the investor, what benefits uh, will you have, what benefits will the investor have. And again, you remember that what we mentioned also, what happens if the investor now wants to pull out and wants to sell their shares how do you manage these things? Yeah, be careful about these uh, details and definitely ask for legal advice here. This is nothing where you just can uh, say, oh yes, you give me 10 million rand and I will uh, do this, 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 and then you say, okay, and that's it. Mm, in most cases, this is not gonna work in favor for both parties. It's frustrating for both parties, yeah? I just wanted here to also highlight that there are of course risks of non-disclosure, okay? So if you were before not able to, to repay any debt and now asking for more debt, knowing that there will be a problem, there can be fines, you will be liable, and in some cases, there can be even criminal charges. Yeah, be careful with these things. It is a way to raise capital, having an investor in there, and uh, but then you have a shareholder usually in your business. Have a look what you expect, and then you, you know, so sit down with this other person and say, okay, so what. Do we expect from you? What do you expect from us? It's not that you say, here's the contract and this is what we want to do. Also, don't do that from the investor side, you know? Say, okay, so so ask them questions, be engaged there. This is a partnership, yeah? Treat it also like a partnership and you are always able to ask questions there if you don't understand something, if you, if you need clarity, Mm. In most cases, I definitely would recommend having your own lawyer. Don't rely only on the lawyer of the of the investor. So it always depends on you know um, where are you in your journey of entrepreneurship. Okay, so and 
how big of an investment is the investor uh, doing into your business, how detailed and clear also these agreements need to be. Okay, so yeah, let me just say here our contact details and then we come uh, in a second to our um, Q and A is this is our telephone number and the landline and the cell phone number. Keep in mind we are in South Africa, so it is 0027 up front. If you want to email us, please use admin at fundingconnection.co.za. If you want to have a little bit more information about uh, Funding Connection, you can go to our website. There is a chat during working hours where you also can WhatsApp us or via email contact us and then get some advice. Um, so Lila said, um, yes, if you want to meet me, you need to pay. That is, uh, that's not a problem. But let me tell you, I have an amazing team and they are able definitely to answer all the first questions. Yeah. So, and are able to guide you. And my, my approach is whoever comes in contact with Funding Connection, we want to be able to tell you what is your next step. And it, in some cases, it, it means, of course, okay, we can assist you. This is what we can do for you. This is your next step. And this is what uh, how much we charge for it. In other cases, it is we are not the right people to talk to, but you can talk to these people, go there, have a look there, you know. So, And in some cases, my team is also saying, uh, so if it is complex, capital raising process with uh, maybe a mix between a loan and a grant from different financiers and funders, then they will, and you are not 100% sure about it, then they will say, okay, let's set up a meeting with with uh, with Dagmar and uh, charging a reduced rate of 790 Rand. That is, I don't put $40 so, and uh, then we just really sit down there on Zoom and just discuss, okay, what 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 is your best way forward? Okay, so now we, we do the Q&A. Please do me a favor, the security things, I'll have a look at it again. I was prepared, but uh, yeah, my brain is definitely not working. And uh, if there are some questions, I see what I can answer. If not, I'm uh, sending it definitely out <laughs> to Xolani and then uh, um, you have the answer, I promise you. Let me just stop this. Hi, uh, uh, if you have a question, you can just unmute yourself and, and, and speak. But before you do that, I do have, I think, three questions from social media. One, the first question is one, uh, IP protection and trademark, what's the difference? So I'm gonna ask them at the same time. Uh, that's one, scaling uh, and invest. Oh, okay. okay, okay, I think this is much more of a comment. Um, uh, investor disclosure is more when you are ready to scale. Oh, here's a question, I, I see it now. Um, do you have any uh, advice in terms of how a business can scale and get in investment if you are in farming. The third uh, question, and I'm gonna try to read this, I can't make heads or tails of it. Um, oh, what's the, okay, I'm, I'll summarize it, Dagmar, it's too long. What, but what is the benefit of being uh, compliant? Uh, in, in regards to South Africa. I think, Dagmar, uh, by the way, uh, thank you for, uh, Stello, thank you for asking this question. I know it's too long. I'm sorry that I I I, uh, I shortened your question. Dagmar, maybe before you answer this question, because it's going to link up to exactly what you do, do you mind sharing with everyone what is it that Funding Connection does? This question will be answered by that, and then you can answer the two. <laughs> Okay, okay, so let's start with this. We are a private consulting firm and we assist entrepreneurs raising capital. 
we do that through lots of advisory. First of all, we want to understand, is your venture even fundable? Because not each and every great business idea is fundable. Then we can assist with business plans, financial forecast, feasibility studies, pitch decks, whatever belongs uh, is in this uh, uh, circle what you need. That's where, what, uh, what we can do for you. And the last step is assisting with the capital raising. Um, and it depends on, you know, so it's, for some people we say it's application support. That means we're filling out forms, compiling documents, creating data room for, uh, for investors. And then biggest part what we are doing in this last step is making sure that all the information uh, the assumption in the business plan have the documents and it's it's consistent. Yeah. So South Africans, just for everybody outside of South Africa, uh, let me tell you, they are really creative. OK, so they, they need a registered company. Then the company registration document is from company A. They need here a tax clearance certificate. The tax clearance certificate is from company B. And then they need uh, annual financial statements. And then this guy has the annual financial statements from company C. Okay, so this is what I mean with creative South Africans. They don't have all the documents of one company, but they're supplying something. Uh, it's not working like this. Then we just go through there and say, okay, so this is not working. Let's see how we can manage it uh, that you have all the documents for this one application together. Okay, so this is what we are doing. We are charging for it and uh, it depends on, we have different models. You find lots of our prices. We are transparent on our website. In any case, everything of up to 10 million rand, that is round about uh, 1,500,000 US dollars. So just to give you a little bit of an idea and uh, is on our website, everything above, I quote individually. Um, okay, so let's start with um, trademark and intellectual property. Okay, so you can trademark a name like funding connection. This is what you can trademark. Um, you can trademark some designs. Okay, so think about the um, font of Coca-Cola. I'm sure this is also trademarked. Yeah. So because if you write uh, um, Germany in this Coca-Cola font, everybody thinks it, uh, uh, they read in Coca-Cola. It's recognizable immediately. Intellectual property, if you develop um, I don't know, um, battery, what is always charged? Okay, the battery doesn't need to be charged. And uh, you need to protect this patent. That uh, That is an intellectual property and uh, what, uh, what you can patent then. Okay. Um, what was the other one? Oh, scaling. If you want to scale um, agriculture, okay, so you're definitely no, no, able that, to... uh, uh, Dagmar, the scaling part you've answered it. Hopefully, they got they got what you, what, what you meant because of what you do. Because I wanted to link that with exactly what you do. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> no, but scaling. you can still you can still explain. You can still explain. Okay, so scaling means just uh, growing your business and uh, then you have different ways of doing it. Let's use funding connection. We can scale this up. I have different skills in my team and uh, I organized our business plan like a conveyor belt. So we have an accountant who does the financial forecast. We have somebody who does the research. We have somebody who does the writing and we have somebody who manages everything. Scaling this up is quite easy because we now can just see, okay, so we are getting more business plans and we were able to double our sales before uh, COVID from one year to the other in any case. So I know what I'm talking about. It was easy. We just needed now to find people and just say, OK, so we now need another accountant to do the financial forecast. We need now another person who does the research. This is quite easy because it's like a conveyor belt. 
And if I have one person and this person needs to have the entrepreneurial spirit, have an under can communicate nicely with clients, is good with numbers, is great with research, and is an absolutely great essay writer. Um, finding a person like this, your chances are quite small. Yeah. So scaling is only able when you can quickly grow a business and you plan that already nicely upfront. You have the other version is diversification. That means now we are not only offering business plans, but we now also say, let's do, um, I don't know. Um, we become now also somebody who is lending money. Yeah, so then that would be diversification. It's still in our industry and expertise, but that would be di uh, to diversify. Fantastic. Rodney, I see you have your hand up. You may unmute yourself. Anyone okay, else Rodney, with a yeah, I see there are some questions on the chat. I don't know if I can read okay, let me ask you. Hello? Hi. Yes, I can hear you, Rodney. Yeah, how are you? Good evening. Good, thank you. Yes, uh, yes. I, I had to touch on um, uh, the tax, the tax part. So my question is based on that. So I just want to, can you please elaborate on because I had someone talk about um, the tax output and the tax, uh, the input tax and output tax. Can you please clarify on that or elaborate more? Oh, okay, so so the input and output. Sorry, say again, Rodney. I mean, how does it work for for small businesses, especially when one is starting? The output tax and input tax. Yes. Okay. So, uh, you are South African, Rodney. I'll assume because of his surname. Okay. <laughs> I don't know these things. I said, okay. <laughs> so we assume you're South African. In South Africa, you pay VAT uh, only after your yearly sales is above 1 million rand. Then you need to register for uh, value added tax. Okay. So, and there is an input VAT and an output VAT. The input VAT means you are collecting uh, uh, money. So your clients are paying you. That means you are collecting for SaaS. You should be paid for this, okay? That's what I think. Um, you can discuss this with SaaS later. So, and so somebody is paying you. You are collecting that for SaaS and keeping it in your. In I always recommend having a separate account and collect the VAT there. You know, each and every month, you know, or each and every week, you put money aside. So the output. Uh, tax is when you are now buying raw material and you are paying somebody else um, for the raw material and uh, then you are also paying VAT. We all pay VAT by the way, you know, so most of us just uh, that's at the end um, at the till you pay the it's calculated in all the prices we are paying here. So, and you have the opportunity now to say to SARS, I collected for 100,000 Rand, 15%, um, that is 15,000 Rand for you. Okay, so that's what I would need to pay you. But I uh, had bought for, I make it easy for me, 10,000 Rand raw material, and I paid 1,500 Rand of the VAT. Uh, VAT already to the other supplier and he will pay you that. So you can minus this. So you only pay, what did I say? 15,000 minus 1,500. Yeah. So this is how you can calculate this. Your tax consultant will be able to assist you there. It's only relevant if you are selling more than 84,000 Rand a month. Um. Okay. Cool. Uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, I could not answer it better, by the way, as a, uh, as an accountant. Okay. But that's here's another question. I didn't mix it up. 
So Lania, no, then you mix didn't. it up with output no, and the input. Yeah, you're sure. correct. Okay, so yeah, you're yes. very, very correct. No, <laughs> don't worry. Okay, so. <laughs> I, I, I think the language that you use is better than the language that I would have used. Um, do you assist NGO and NPC sector companies? That question is coming from Quentin Ellis. Okay, Quentin, we are, um, we just talked about value added tax. So I'm always concentrating on where can we add value to it? Okay, so and we are concentrating on assisting entrepreneurs. Do we know how to draft a business plan? Do we know how to develop a budget for a nonprofit organization? Yes, we do. We've done that. We uh, And I know that lots of people have raised donations with our plan. I am not the right person really to help with raising donations. Raising donations is um, challenging. Okay, so definitely for me. And the reason why is, I can also explain that because you, you're raising finance, you're going to financiers, you know they have funding available. There is a budget, yeah? You're going now to a donor who has 100 applications and is only able to uh, satisfy three. The chances are too small for me, okay? So, and also too small for me that I feel comfortable to charge anybody else. We are able to do uh, business plans and budgets. That's not a problem. We have a couple of people also with the lottery fund to, to get these things uh, straight there. We, we can do that. We can help with filling out forms. If you say here is a form we need to have filled out and I know lots of people are scared of it, um, but everything else, I'm. I'm trying desperately to find fundraisers, but whoever is coming to me and say I'm an experienced fundraiser, it's not to my satisfaction and expectations. And uh, so that's why, just for you to know. Yeah. Um, okay, there's another question. Rodney, uh, don't worry, you'll get Dagmar's contact details via her email. So she will send the recording to everyone um, or, or, or with the YouTube link and also just a summary of what we've shared today together with an attached presentation that she has shared today. So don't worry, you'll definitely have contact details of, of, of Dagmar. And by the way, you can go to www.fundingconnection.co.za and you'll also be in touch with her via her website directly. The following question was, please summarize the relevance of feasibility study. Dagmar, before you answer this, by the way, those who may, may be attending this for the first time, actually Dagmar has done a masterclass on, on this topic of feasibility study and why is it necessary? That's one. And, and secondly, why is it enable, an, an enabler for your business growth and not just growth and for you to see if there's a market to begin with? Uh, you might be a spaza shop and that's all you can be. And this study helps you define if uh, is it possible for you to grow where uh, more than where you are. Dagmar, over to you. I did not mean to explain your masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did it well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So let me just say hello to Bruce uh, Sufutu, who is uh, he, who is one of my funding consultant, and he sits in uh, Soweto. So if anybody is there, um, there's also somebody to contact there directly. You'll find all our funding consultant on our website. That was one of the requirements from our clients. Can't you have somebody close to us? We want to sit down with somebody. We don't feel comfortable with Zoom. So that's why we started this. Um, thanks, Bruce, for joining here and spending your evening here. So, feasibility study. Um, let me give you an example. And again, you remember the Poppy Act, so I can't uh, um, explain, uh, give too much details out there. I know we somebody wanted to buy into a franchise and uh, they had an offer to go as a new a location into a shopping mall in a specific area and um, let me just come up with some ideas so that it's a little bit more 
spectacle. Okay, so let's say they, they wanted to do a beauty and spa salon in um, somewhere in uh, south of Durban, and they wanted us to know, Dagmar, do you think this makes sense? So what we have done in the feasibility study is we had a look at um, the, the price uh, range, the specific franchise or would be, they would be in a higher price range. We had a look at what competitors are in this area. There were already two or three uh, high-end beauty spas. And we also had then a look at the um, people living there. And we saw they were more the, the in the middle income bracket. And then we, of course, also needed to have a look at the tourists there. Okay, because there were lots of tourists and we knew that. So we needed to have a look at, does it make sense uh, to open another uh, uh, spa in this specific mall for the uh, higher priced uh, beauty spas? And um, yes, my uh, our client was not satisfied with us in the beginning because I said I would be scared. I wouldn't do this. Okay. So they were quite upset with us two days later. Of course, they called back and said, Dagmar, thanks very much. We know, uh, of course, we didn't want to hear this, but we also, that's why we wanted to have a feasibility study because they obviously also wanted to be sure if this is now really working. Yeah. And we were, we, we give them some findings, some recommendations and say, okay, so I don't think this is the right location. Find another one you know, where you have higher chances to, to succeed. So you always have a look at the, um, if it is doable in the first place, sometimes you also have technical feasibility studies, then there is an engineer with involved, but this is a typical example for feasibility study with a recommendation. Couldn't have said it better. Um... Uh, are you are you okay? Are your charges paid in advance or paid after getting investment? No, they are paid in advance. But Dragma, you can share some clarity in that. Okay, so I also in the beginning, and I started in Germany. Uh, thought, oh, let's be fair. Let's get paid after they raise the capital. What do you think would happen? How much money do you think I saw after somebody else got financed? They were all hiding. Okay, so and I was not willing to uh, uh, to chase them and or to use my karate moves on them. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I decided we do that other way around. I'm charging fair prices, uh, definitely fair also in comparison to to uh, what other people are charging and also to the standard of our uh, business plans and services, you know, so um, even um, team members and management from government institutions are recommending go to Dagmar, let them do the business plan, even let them help you with the application process because they know our PEC is impeccable, you know, mm. the, uh, application that's no, value for money it's value for money definitely yes. that's why i have her here um <laughs> another question another question uh um, who is relevant to draft agreements on business ah actually Dagmar is actually good with that as well who is relevant um yeah. it so for me it's always I always weigh up things, okay? It depends on what you want. Agreements, even without a lawyer, are still legally binding, okay? So, and if this is a partnership and you just start smaller and there is not too much money involved and there's not too much money involved, depends on how you feel about not too much money, not about how anybody else feels about it. Yeah, and then you can just make an agreement and state clearly, this is my responsibilities and this is what I'm expecting from this venture. And the other person also writes that down. The two of you can sign this uh, and uh, make sure also what happens if somebody wants to get out of the agreement. It's like, a, you know, when you, it's like a marriage. 
if you are getting married, you know, so, and uh, we all have, according to law, in any case, some, some marriage agreements, but you can make difference. And for business partnerships, you also, you think about what happens if you want to go separate ways, same thing, write this down. Otherwise, find a lawyer. My recommendation is don't just say somebody says, I'm a lawyer, ask them how experienced they are in business law. Yeah. Mm. So um, that this is a specialist, but of course they all come to uh, with a specific price and then you just need to think about what is it worth. Mm. If you say you can't afford it, write it on your own. Better you have written something than nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well uh, uh, Dagmar did mention, uh, I know I know we have, we have we just run over time. I thought we we're going to close at quarter past. Anyway, so I think part of your question, the terms and conditions of that needs, needs to be there. Dagmar did touch on it on the masterclass uh, in the shareholder uh, agreement. And obviously that's part of what CIPC would also want to, to see. It's not a requirement, but it is advisable to have that in place. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time that we had this evening. Do not worry, those who want to get in touch with Dagmar, um, they will get the contact details via email. As I had already mentioned, it, it's definitely not gonna be this week. It will be early next week, hopefully by Tuesday, Dagmar will send that. I just need to prepare the recording accordingly. And that takes a bit of time on my end. That being said, Dagmar, once again, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and just helping us as entrepreneurs navigate the legality of being a business owner and why is it important to be compliant with some of these laws in our countries and why it is an enabling factor for us to even approach financiers uh, when, 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 when we have these things in place. So I think now entrepreneurs now sort of have a, a fair idea when they come and talk to you in terms of where they are and, and in, in the whole scheme of their growth plan and why they would need that kind of advice. Your parting words, Dagma, and we close off. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Uh, these are, I always say, you know, so it is now, what is it? 7.30, these are all the really hard die entrepreneurs, <laughs> all the ones who really want to make a difference. So I absolutely love this. That's why I'm also here this evening. Um, yes, you get my contact details. Like I said, we give out lots of advice free of charge. My team is amazing. They are able to guide you and tell you definitely your next step. And uh, yes, and compliance. I know it's not fun. I totally agree. <laughs> Uh, nobody likes this. I don't uh, think so, but uh, we need to obey the law. You know, it's like traffic laws. There are also laws. It's just uh, regulating uh, how an economy is working. It uh, attracts investors, uh, national and international, and that's why these things are just important. Thank you once again. Thanks everyone for joining us. And we will see you next time. I think our masterclass is on month end, uh, but uh, you'll get the invite in the next in the next week. Hopefully, I would have prepared that already, but I will definitely be in touch with everyone via email as well, and to invite you on that. But it's also going to be available on, on social media. Do check out uh, Funding Connection on social media. Check out Funding Connection. Uh, uh, on uh, even uh, they are on LinkedIn as well, so they are present everywhere. You can check our, our Facebook page as well, and our all we are all available on social media. Iterating what I said earlier on, we do have a free course for all entrepreneurs who are interested to develop their business to scalability, and so that they learn how to do that and what is required uh, intimately in terms of business on how to do that. The course is free. Those are interested there, they will definitely be receiving an email from, everyone will receive that email, but those who are interested, they can definitely apply for the course. It will be, it will be facilitated by us internally. And thank you so much. Bye-bye everyone. Thanks very much, Vandwani Foundation, Solela, Charles.
for this great platform. You're doing a great job there too. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye, bye guys. Bye.